Well, I want to kind of finish what I was sharing on the two thieves. You all kind of remember that? Yeah. Talking about two thieves. <clears throat> and um, let's start with, um, let's see here, Mark chapter 15. <clears throat> Excusez-moi, s'il vous plaît. Mark 15 <clears throat> and verse uh, 27 and 28. So, <clears throat> so there were two thieves, right? Two thieves. And um, so let's, let's give them a name. How about that? Y'all want to do that? Let's give these thieves a name. Okay. So the, one of them we're going to call the strange fire thief. Okay. <clears throat> the other one we're going to call the fire fellowshipping thief. Okay. Now, um, this verse says, and with him they crucified two thieves, and the one on his right hand and the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, he was numbered with the transgressors. Now, um, I'm not going to have you jumping around a whole bunch, I don't think, but let's go to Luke, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to explain the strange fire thief a little better. And we can, we can begin to understand his motives and and um, remember, we were talking about two different views of fire and the altar. And he has a little different view. Luke 23, verse 39 and 43. This is the strange fire thief. <clears throat> and one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. All right, so... If you remember when we were talking, the first time that I shared, I shared about um, uh, Manoah and uh, his wife, who was unnamed in uh, the book of Judges. And we saw that, that there was a difference of uh, how they saw the fire. Manoah saw it as a bad thing and said, you know, we're going to die from this. <coughs> My voice is starting to give out finally. And um, his wife, she saw it the way that it was. And she saw it as instead of being killed or rejected, it was proof that fire was proof that God had accepted what had come forth. <clears throat> we have a similar, th similar thing here with, this, uh, with these two thieves. And so the strange fire thief, based on what he said here in verse 39, he misreads the fire, and he, he reads this altar fire as bad. This is fi bad. He misreads the purpose, and he assumed that the purpose was to escape the altar fire. Um, this one's going to sound a little weird, but he misreads Nadab and Abihu. He thinks he should survive. And this is an example of people knowing John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth should not perish but have everlasting life, as opposed to 1 John 3.16, By this perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. If, if you stick just with John 3.16, then it's all about saving us. But if you add in 1 John 3.16, you realize that he wants that same spirit flowing out of us to others. <clears throat> he misreads the, the Son of God. He thinks, his because he's talking to Jesus when he says, save us and save, you know, save yourself misreads the Son of God and he thinks his only purpose, his only purpose is rescue when he doesn't, Jesus doesn't rescue himself. So, so he thinks that's his purpose and he, he slanders and he curses and he expects intervention instead of turning on the inside of him to accept God's work and his plan and what he what he wants to set in motion into our lives and he in all of that he doesn't want to be in the fire with Jesus he wants Jesus to get them out of the fire 
Okay. All right, so let's talk about the fire fellowshipping thief. Y'all like these names? <laughs> um, what he spoke, first of all, he, his first thing that he said, he spoke to the uh, strange fire thief, the one who thought this was all strange fire. He didn't, he didn't talk to Jesus first. He talked to that guy who just said all of these things wrong that are misreading the Lord, misreading his heart, misreading the purpose that God has for everyone that's born again to be with him eventually. Not, you know, not newborn Christians. And, and in some cases, it may be many, many, many years. But he spoke to the strange fire thief and he says, but, but the other answering rebuked him. The fire fellowship and thief is rebuking the strange fire <laughs> thief. Yeah. Whoa. Saying, does not thou fear God? Seeing thou art in the same condemnation, and I like that it says they're all in the same condemnation because they're all in the same fire. And believe it or not, condemnation is a big part of the fire. <clears throat> Verse 41, and, and we indeed justly for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing wrong. In other words, this other thief, this fire fellowshipping thief, he, he's saying, this is unjust treatment. This is unjust treatment that Jesus is going through. We deserve it. We, we've got no righteousness in this at all. We, we earn this. But he, did, he hadn't done anything wrong. And so, um, then he turns and he speaks to Jesus. This is verse 42. And he said unto Jesus, Lord. Okay, this, is, this isn't... Okay. This word Lord here, he is saying, Lord of the fire, if you will. You know, not Lord of the Rings, <laughs> but Lord of the Fire. Not Lord of the Dance. <laughs> this is all coming to me right now. Sorry, we need, we need to move along. Uh, <clears throat> but he, he, he begins with that. He begins with that. Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. So his view of the altar, his view of the fire He's bringing it out right here. He chooses the altar. He doesn't say, get me out of this. Praise God. Amen. He says, I want to be with you. Oh, wow. He chooses the fire. He chooses the altar. He wants to be with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Not with a miracle of escape. But just with his heart. And, and if you have his heart, then, you, you know, it comes out. He doesn't justify himself. Because, you know, the other thief did. Like, well, you know, save me, save me. Why? And, and the fire fellowshipping thief said to him, the other one, he said, we deserve this. Stop trying to get out of it. But then he turns to Jesus and says, you, you didn't deserve this. This is unjust. And that's the fire. That's the true fire. Okay. And so um, he understands Jesus' fire is unjust. You know, he had done nothing wrong. But even though he understands that it's unjust, he also is looking at Jesus and going, you know what? This guy on the other side of you is just shooting his mouth off and wanting to get out of this and all of this kind of stuff. 
But you, you, you're not saying anything. You're not cursing back. You're not accusing the people that put you on here and your last dying words to a couple of thieves about how bad they are. Or you, you're taking this in a right spirit. You, the, you're treating this as different than like a sin offering or something. You're turning this into a sweet savor offering. That's what he's watching. He's looking. I mean, if you can imagine that, it's, it's almost like the, the guy on, let's just say his left, which is the strange fire thief, he's looking over at Jesus. And whatever side he's seeing, he's misreading it. But the other one is looking from this angle, and he's seeing a different side of Jesus. Not that they're both not there for both of them, but he's just seeing a different side, you know. And uh, so uh, Luke 23, 43 says, And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, Today, today, God. shalt thou be with me in paradise. Okay, so I wrote down a question. So why did Jesus receive him so quickly? It, it was quick. It was quick. And the answer is because this, and I want you to hear this little statement, this is the spirit that he's after. This is what he's after. So, so Jesus is looking at him, getting that spirit. And all of a sudden, all other issues are wiped away with this uh, fire fellowshipping thief. It, there, it's not forgiveness. It's not forgiveness. He didn't say, I forgive you. It's acceptance of that spirit. And I'm going to give you some other examples as we go here. Because that spirit is what he's after. So... Okay, all other issues, what he did wrong, how he handled fire at other times. How you handled fire at other times. <laughs> it all gets wiped away if you, if you blew it. It's just pure D with me. How he, uh, and what, and all of those things meant nothing to Jesus because it's showing that that really is what he's after, okay? <clears throat> now, one of the things that I want to point out is that this, this thief being accepted like this wasn't like a deathbed confession. You know, you know uh, that, <clears throat> that I, I'm on my deathbed, I've lived a horrible life, and I've held off to accepting Jesus, but I'm going to do it now so I don't go to hell. And that way I can have my cake and eat it too. It's not a deathbed confession. And it's, not, and it's not necessarily meant to say to us, oh, there's hope to the very end. Because there wasn't hope for salvation. This wasn't about salvation. This was about being with him today. Today. Amen. So, all that being true, um, it was about being with him, being with Jesus in his sufferings. Therefore, this guy's going up with him in the flames with Jesus now, <laughs> you know. So, that, that got me thinking of another example. And while you try to guess what it is, I'm going to take a little drink to help my throat. It's in the Bible. It's in the New Testament. Okay, I got it. I know what it is. It's Acts chapter 7. <clears throat> Acts chapter 7. Because my, I wrote a question in between the thieves and go into Acts chapter 7, and it, it you know, because I was just talking about what the real issue was, was that he demonstrated what Jesus has been wanting from us, from him, 
And he said, you know, you'll be with me. And I wrote down this question as we, as we turn to Acts 7. Is that what happened to Stephen? Fun. All right. So let's look at it and just see. Let's just see. If, is it? Is it what happened to Stephen? Verse 64, uh, 54, sorry. 54. Acts 7, 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Hmm. A little bit of fire there. But he, verse, the next verse, 55. Let me read the last part of 54. They gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, but he. You see that? But he's different. But he being full of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Looked up steadfastly into heaven, okay, steadfastly. He didn't just glance up or it wasn't like a less, a quick thing, da 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 da. He's standing there talking to him and they're starting to gnash on him with their teeth. And he's looking steadfastly up to the Lord. He's not, he's not all caught up in the fire. He's got a bigger fire that burns in his heart for the Father. He's in another place. Yeah. And, and in 1 Peter, it can, t it, it can show you that you can be in another place, as it were. Hallelujah. You know. <clears throat> and then also like 1 Peter, the rest of that verse says, and saw the glory of God. Did you ever really notice that before? Did you usually notice Jesus standing? And we'll deal with that. But the, he saw the glory of God. Exactly what First Peter says at the end of the corridor, at the end of this fellowshipping in his sufferings, that you will see the glory of God. God. This is that. Amen. And the two thieves, one of them got that. Amen. And the other one rejected that. Okay? So there's more. He saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Okay? So, Jesus standing. That's a rare one. It's a rare one. We'll get into that in a minute. Verse 56, and said, Behold, I see. I see. He's not blind. He sees, he sees Jesus. He sees him right there. He's in the fire with him. He sees him. The, I see the heavens open and the Son of God standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice. So, so he, then they. Remember, we got that just a few verses up. Contrast of he and they. A contrast of, if you will, evildoers and those who are going through the sufferings with Christ. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Verse 57, then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out and stoned him. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> These guys have got a real problem with somebody seeing Jesus and being with him in his suffering. Good grief. Um, they cried out with a loud voice. They stopped their own ears. Because they can't read it. They read it wrong. They misread it. Just like uh, uh, Manoah that we dealt with in the first go-round. And then the last time when we started talking about the thieves and we see that one of them is just strange fire and get me out of this. And to the other one, it is, you've done nothing wrong. You're going through unjust treatment and look at you. You're not cursing. He is. You're not complaining. You're blessing. I want to be with you. 
They say, I don't want to be with him, <laughs> the other thief. I want to be with you. Uh, and they ran upon him, of course. <clears throat> and then it says, uh, and, well, let's just take verse 58. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul, who would later become Paul, who later, if you've ever read some of his writings called the Bible, you'll know all the kind of stuff he went through, and yet he saw it as a badge of honor. Think about it. For those of you who know the scriptures, you know that's true. Uh, and they stoned Stephen, calling upon God. They didn't just stone him. They stoned him while he's calling upon God. And what's he calling? He's saying, Lord Jesus Receive my spirit. <laughs> Receive my spirit. Not my works. Wow. Don't look at the, the body bloody and blood pouring out and going to die pretty soon. You don't look at that. Receive my spirit. Because I'm with you in this spirit. Lord Jesus received my spirit and he kneeled down and guess what he did? He cried with a loud voice. Remember it says that of, of them, that they had a, they, they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears. He cried with a loud voice, Stephen did. And said, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he said this, he fell asleep. Oh, no. It's just hard. Oh, he fell asleep? <laughs> you know, this, this is a nightmare. He fell asleep? Well, he must have been very peaceful. <laughs> he just fell asleep with the Lord. So just a few points here. <clears throat> we talked about the thief, the, the fire fellowshipping thief, and how he's He's defending Jesus on the cross. He's not defending Jesus of Nazareth. He's not defending uh, the babe in the manger. He's defending the one on the cross. And and he said, when the thief said, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. And Jesus said, I won't forget you. I won't forget you, Mary of Bethany. I won't forget you, thief. Jesus didn't say, what's your name? I'll remember your name. No, I remember your spirit. I remember that you wanted to be with me in the fire. I remember that the sufferings that you went through, you no longer suffered for what you did. You were with me in the fire. And Stephen, Stephen, he looks up while they're stoning him, while he's in the sufferings with the Lord, and he sees Jesus standing. Jesus is on the throne, the Father at his right hand. He stands up to welcome that spirit, just like he did the thief, this day with me. This day with me. So one final set of scriptures. Revelation 7 
verse 13 through 17. Um, everyone is given an opportunity to go through great tribulation. I'm not just talking about end time people. Everybody is given an opportunity to go through great tribulation. When I say everybody, particularly his people, that's what I'm, the main emphasis that I believe that these verses are talking about. Because it's talking about, uh, and many, many times when we read these scriptures, we read this as, this as if these scriptures include all people that are saved or, you know, that sort of thing. That This is going to happen to all of us. And you see such intimacy of the Lamb with this group. And you see intimacy of God with this group. So let's read verse 13, Revelation 7, verse 13. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what are these? What are these that fly up to the clouds and doves that fly to their windows? <clears throat> what are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. It didn't say the great tribulation. It's all, it's none of it's capitalized. And there's no the in front of it. It's just great tribulation. It's the sufferings of Christ. Now, if you want me to fully prove that to you, I have a whole course on the book of Revelation to show that that actually, from start to finish, is the, is the point. But this doesn't need all that much convincing. He says, that came out of great tribulation, and have washed, not, not out of thee, out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Now, if you did do my study, I pointed this out and said, isn't it interesting that these white robes were washed in the blood of the Lamb, and now they're clean? Hmm. They're walking, these guys are walking around in blood-soaked white robes. <laughs> See, we go, well, you can't do that. Yeah, you can, because they're white in the sight of God because of the blood. So, came out of trip and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And notice that it's not just the blood of Jesus. Therefore are they before the throne of God. So these, this particular group, these are they who, it doesn't give the time period, it doesn't do, it, it'll have, guess what? It'll have other scriptures later on in other chapters of Revelation and it'll talk about wiping away tears, and it'll talk about the things that are going to go on with them and everything. But this is a particular group that have gone through and, as it were, by that spirit, have joined this, this group right here. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. Okay. It does not say that about everybody that's up around the throne. It doesn't. It says about this group that they are specifically going to uh, dwell in his temple. Is that what it says? Serve him day and night in his temple. They'll be before the throne. I guess like priests or something. They offered the lamb. Night and day in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. <clears throat> dwell among them. I'm among them. I am part of this group. This is my group. I'm, he's not on the throne as it were. Just to rule or just to bless or just to judge or just to. Do. He gets up just like for Stephen. And he gets in there among them. 
Verse 16, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. Now listen to verse 17. For the Lamb, the Lamb himself, folks, for the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them. Okay, just take that right there. Just imagine these, and the Lamb comes and he feeds them. He's feeding. He's taking care. You're not going to hunger anymore. It doesn't say what he feeds them, but they're probably fed on lamb. Because that's how they got there. <laughs> how intimate is this thing, to this little group, to, or big group, or, you know, to Jesus? Intimate enough that the lamb, not the son of God, not the, not, but the lamb comes. And then he says, here. I want to feed. I, I, can, I just see him taking food to their mouth. I want to feed you. I, you were with me. And it wasn't easy. But your heart was right. And you were. I was there when you went through that. I was with you. I was in you. And you let me. And I just want to take care of you just want to feed you. For the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water. So, so Jesus, when he walked the earth, he said, you know, in the last days, the great day of the feast, you know, he's talking about living water. Out of your innermost being shall flow living water. And... We know that, um, that the New Jerusalem, the city, the New Jerusalem represents the wife of the Lamb. You know, the, the guy said it to John, you know, have you seen the wife of the Lamb? And he's like, the wife? I heard about the bride. But the wife, that which he is married to? Took him on a high mountain and showed him New Jerusalem. You know, transparencies and stuff like that so that you can peer in and you can see in there a throne and in, in, on that throne you see a lamb. That's the way it describes it. Slaughtered lamb. And from that slaughtered lamb, living water does flow out and it flows from him out to her, inside of her, and then it flows as a river out of her to the nations. But this is the Lamb coming and leading them over to living fountains of water. And then it changes from the Lamb and says, finally, and God shall wipe away all their tears from their eyes. I'm, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, it, you know, I've never been a big fan of, of the, the thoughts that many would have about him wiping away our tears. Oh, I'm going to go to heaven. And just, he's going to say, you know, you poor thing. You know, that husband that you had to put up with. You know, you won't have to cry anymore. He's in hell. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, let me wipe those tears away. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You're so precious. Stop crying. I said, you're not going to cry anymore. <laughs> anyway. But this one got me when I saw the lamb and God. It says God himself. God shall God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, are going to wipe away all their tears from their eyes. They're going to not just wipe away all tears so you don't cry. It didn't say they wouldn't weep anymore. Maybe they will weep so much for joy to be with him that God will wipe away those tears. Because it didn't say stop the tears. It just said I'll wipe them away. 
You know, I saw them when you went through it. I, I saw, you know, I've seen your heart cry out to be able to be with me, to put me first and not your own flesh or your own circumstances or your own reputation or and I, I, knowing the way that God is so selfless, I can just see them doing that happily because they're so selfless. So, I just see this progression that the Lord gave to me through Manoah and his wife. And I, I see him at the end of it, of that chapter, fearful. And, and saying, you know, I can just see that some of the same spirit and things of, of the strange fire uh, thief but I see Manoah's wife like the fire fellowshipping thief. I see a trend, if you will, and I know that this is way bigger than what little we've had a chance to share on. A trend, same issues, same issues, same thing. And then we get to, you know, Stephen, my Lord. We see that same heart. We see with that one thief, Jesus saying, today with me, today with me. You see Stephen at the point of laying down his life and you see Jesus get up off his throne. I welcome you here. I welcome that thief, you know. That, that thief, you know, I can hear him saying to Stephen as he's ascending, that thief, you remember that guy? He's a prince now. He was a thief. But he's a prince with God. And Stephen... And I love that part that he said that his last words, you know, of course we know that. His last words were, lay not this sin to their charge. The part that struck me and just rang within my being was, and because and the first part was, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Doesn't say he said it with a loud voice. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He said, lay with a loud voice, lay not this sin to their charge. Muy fuerte. Very strong. And they all heard it, including the guy named Saul that was there. They all heard it. And they all saw it. And they all saw like that other thief looking at him and going, you know, you, you didn't deserve this. But look how you are. When you see it, it's glorious. When you see it, it's real. Is, is everybody in the Jesus tribe at the same place spiritually to be able to? No, no. If nothing else, we can, we can see or hear it and see it in the word and honor it in them until God can work that in us. Is that fair enough? He didn't put demands on. He didn't take the three Hebrew children and say, end of the fire, whoop, one, whoop, two. Abednego, come on, buddy. Three, no, he didn't throw them in the fire. 
The guys that did throw them in the fire burned up. So I'm not going to throw you in the fire. <laughs> Just because I'm so spiritual and I don't want to be burned up. <laughs> so it's not, it's not a factor of, of fear. It's a factor of eventually seeing it for what it is in the heart of God. And that's the truth. And it's seeing all these from his perspective. And when we do, when we do, yeah. the, the scales will come off. You know, that's what it said of Paul. He was blinded. When he saw Jesus, he was blinded. I, I love the fact that he was blinded because when he saw Jesus, he couldn't see anything else except the last thing he saw. Br you know, burned into his retinas. <laughs> <laughs> 